Hello and welcome to the next um, event of Datron Experience, today with the topic Thread Milling with Datron. My name is Johannes Bormet and I am the Functional Manager for Tech Academy Events and Commissioning. Today I have some support from Marius, please. Yes, um, Johannes said it, my name is Marius Matuschkewitz. I am responsible for uh, developing tools and um, yeah, also research and development tools um, also, we have a guy behind the camera, so our colleague Mark. Hi everyone, also from my side. Um, I'm kind of directing this whole videotape today uh, and will also be the, the one in the background who will ask some questions um, and probably like, go a little deeper into the uh, things that the guys will, will tell you during the session. So as Johanna said it, we're all about threat milling today, some, some exciting topics to come. So guys, let's see what you got for us. Yeah, thank you Mark, thank you Marius. Today we have um, three chapters. So the chapter one is the preparation, the chapter mm -hmm. two is the correct uh, core drilling and the chapter three is the practice with also presentation of a new milling tool. So it is, yeah. So let's start with the first chapter. Mm -hmm. um, the preparation, so which kind of uh, different thread milling tools do we have here on Datron? Um, on Datron uh, especially we just got um, the milling of um, uh, threads, um, but uh, first of all I want to start um, with a form of um, uh, thread milling that means um, the thread cutting yeah? or the thread forming. Um, it's just um, like the same but um, with the thread milling there we have um, an operation with um, chips so that means that we here have a cutting operation mm -hmm. and the forming um, is just only um, with the name set it the forming the thread so that means we form the geometry with a tool. Okay this um, is without chips the forming? So it is yeah. So it's very uh, stable, so we have no problem um, with chips in our process and it's very stable in this case. So you can take uh, or you can, you can um, form the threads um, on a Datron machine but only with the 8 kilowatt spindle because you need a lot of torque in this case and maximum thread size here is the M5. Um, yeah. Yeah, also the, the point um, you said is um, the spindle, so um, um, the difference between um, milling and um, forming um, the thread, um, uh, that means that we have only um, movement in one axis, yeah? so um, also we need to turn around the rotation of the spindle and that is only possible um, on the 8 kilowatt spindle. And we have also some uh, example areas where you can use the forming, so it is to produce screws or it is um, used uh, in the general mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The next uh, topic is the thread tapping or the thread cutting. Mm -hmm. So this we can do also on a Datron. In this case only on an 8 kilowatt spindle, for example here on the MX Cube, mm -hmm. only in the range from M2 to M5 because here we have um, a vector spindle and with this spindle we can change the rotation direction so this is what we need for this case and um, M5 only because we have not enough torque with the 8 kilowatt spindle that uh, depends on the high RPM do you have something more information about the thread tapping? Oh, just we can take a, a small look uh, to the tools, um, to the thread cutting. So it is, so just here we have an example for this. Um, this is uh, the point, just um, these cutting tools are only for one size of thread. That means that we have no chance to take a bigger one or a smaller one with the same tool. Just we have here the chance to make one thread by one uh, ant mill. Okay, maybe we, Mark we have a small video snippet 
Can you show us? Yeah, sure. Um, that we I've can see how it works. I've already shown this before. Uh, well, you have explained it, but you, once again, you see the rotating tool in this cross section. Um, so there's this vertical movement in the in the tool, and the spindle basically just spins um, synchronized the RPM to the feed rate, so you have the correct pitch um, of the thread. In these two kinds of uh, thread cutting and forming, um, we have only one tool for uh, one thread size, so it's not a normal Datron thread. A normal Datron thread is thread milling, yeah? So we have there a range from, for example, M2.5 to M4, mm -hmm. and then M5 up to M8 or higher. Um, so let us talk about a little bit about the thread milling. Yeah. Um, the difference between the milling and the cutting of an th uh, the thread is um, the, the duration yeah, of the axis. That means that we have in the uh, cutting of a thread, we have just uh, movement of one axis. That means uh, that Z, uh, Z axis moves up and down. Um, by um, milling, we just have all axes in working. Those, uh, that means that we have a helix with this go down or uh, from the bottom to the top, also going up. Um, there's the, the, the rotation um, of, the end mill, uh, of the of the cutting tool. Okay. We have three different kinds of these tools here. So the first tool is the milling thread mill. So Mark, can you show us the video? So what you can see here is that this end mill, this end mill in combination with the thread mill is basically creating the counterbore um, and the, the thread in one pass. Um, so this tool is extremely good when it comes to um, like thinner materials like breakthroughs in let's say like plastic housings or sheet metals. Um, so you're probably limited to a certain depth so in average, we say like one times diameter. So if you want to cut in like say M5 uh, with this tool, uh, you would not go deeper than five millimeter because the, the real downside of this tool is that the, um, that the chips cannot really be evacuated in comparison to a normal end mill because there is no chip channel because after the, you got this end mill fluid, there is the fluid of the thread mill. So it's kind of blocking the chips uh, from, from getting out as well as the coolant to get in. But um, that's yeah more or less the, um, the range of usage uh, for this kind of tool. Yeah, yeah, that's it. The point is also, you said it before, so we don't have to drill before. So we make this all in uh, with one um, tool. And so that's the benefit of this tool. Yeah, in this case, we have also only one size for one or one tool in one size. Yeah. So Not a multiple tool. Yeah. So the next tool, uh, standard Datron tool is uh, the multi thread mill. Yeah. Uh, what is special of this tool? So uh, we talk about the, the milling process before, so that means that we have to do a helix um, with uh, movement up or movement down, um, that's not impossible. And um, the benefit of these tools is, you can see it here uh, on the video, we have to go down in the hole and just make a move of one rotation. So um, by making all of the thread, yeah, there you can see also the tool here. There you can also see the difference between the, um, these tools. There's um, just all of the thread inside of the tool. And just here we have just one flank. Yeah. Okay, so this tool looks very cool because you can um, mill a, a, a core hole and then you have only one movement and yeah. you have a finished um, thread. So the last tool is a standard tool. It's a, a standard Datron thread mill. So this is the tool where we have a range from M2.5 to M4 or something else. So we can mill with one tool different kinds of uh, threads. Yeah. So 
what is the benefit and what is the advantages here in, in this case? Yeah, so the, mm -hmm. the, the, the process are the same uh, like the other two tools, so mm -hmm. that means we have to do uh, a movement within Helix uh, moving up on this uh, type of tool, but um, you have to check um, the, the dimension of the tool, that means you have to uh, uh, compensate um, the, the, the radius of the tool for um, the uh, best range of that. So that means um, to, um, to gauge um, the, the, the end mill, that means that you have um, yeah, the perfect dimension for the right thread. Okay. Mark, uh, do we have there also a video snippet? Uh, yes, already shown as well. I'm just um, displaying um, the camera, which has a very close up of all the tools. Mm -hmm. uh, I can also play the um, the process itself, we see that in this cross-section again. So in this case, with a, with a standard regular um, thread end mill, we go one revolution for, for, for the entire, well not for the entire thread, for, for how many revolutions ever the thickness of the plate or the material needs. So other than the multiple fluid one, um, this only allows us um, to go for various depths. Okay, thank you, Mark. So another point, big point, is the selection of the tool. Mm -hmm. So what is the influence of the tools? So it is the machine. Yeah. So, so it is, yeah. So um, yeah, the right tool depends on which machine, which uh, spindle I've got it. So um, that is the main point um, you need to check before. So um, that means if you have a smaller spindle or you have an 8 kilowatt spindle, then you have to check, okay, which tool can I use on my machine and which one is the best for uh, that I want to do. So it depends also a little bit of the clamping system. So we have uh, mm -hmm. different machines with different uh, spindles. For example, the NEO has a 2 kilowatt spindle with a direct uh, shaft clamping yep. and um, the other uh, spindles are uh, 1.8 for example or 3 kilowatt or 4 and the 8 have the HSK 25, mm -hmm. 8 kilowatt, HSK 30, 32. Um, what is the, the difference between these systems? I would say we take uh, a look on the... On the um, Collets? Um, just here on the left side we have um, the 24 one, uh, 25 one, sorry, and the 32 one. So there you can see the difference between these tools, uh, these two. Um, this is the difference is the bigger one. So and also um, the um, that means a rotation. Yeah. Um, also you got it here. We got it here. The the clamping system of the two kilowatt spindle and the spindle of the new. There you have to adapt it, um, the tool, yeah, mm -hmm. directly to make the uh, eight millimeter shank on this um, type. Okay, so if I have a thread mill with a shank diameter of uh, six millimeters, yeah. I need an adapter so for the two kilowatt spindle. Yeah, um, is it possible to work with a um, eight millimeter shaft for uh, for the uh, limit stop ring, the the ring in brass? Yeah. Is it possible to get a tool? Yeah, it also uh, we can make um, um, a tool with the 8 uh, millimeter uh, um, shaft on these types. So um, there are the colleagues from the competence center tools um, that you can call or uh, write an email. And then with these guys um, together, we can make um, a special tool for you. It is um, yeah, it's only special for your what uh, you want to do. Okay, thank you, Marius. So. What we have now, um, more information about the 8 kilowatt spindle. So we have here a vector spindle. So we have uh, RPMs from 1 um, RPM up to 34,000 RPM. And we can also change the rotation direction. And this is the big benefit with the MX cube and the 8 kilowatt spindle for the thread tapping. What we have also as a big influence is uh, the cooling, mm -hmm. the, the spray and um, the spray unit with two and four nozzles. Mm -hmm. So we have on a Daytron machine three different kinds of uh, cooling units. 
and what is the big um, different between the coolant or the big influence uh, of the thread mills here in this case? Yeah, the main part of the coolant is um, that we have a chemical process um, uh, actually there. So um, that gives us the chance to take out the heat from the material and also from the tool going out um, to take there um, the coolant system. So this is the, this is the part we do there when we're cooling uh, with alcohol. Um, there are also some more uh, details in the, in the cooling. Um, so they give us a little bit more um, yeah, movement. Uh, inside of the hole and also have um, yeah the specialty one is the cooling yeah. okay I will show you some uh, different kinds of uh, spraying units from Datron so we start with the Datron Neo unit and you can see there we have two nozzles and um, the spray goes down to the tip of the tool and it is like a, a dust um, cloud on the on the top and you can adjust the nozzles um, and this is very good to adjust it to a small tool or a short tool and a long tool so you can um, can cool the complete range of, a, of the tool yeah. the next um, spraying unit is from uh, M8 cube or ML cube with uh, four adjustable nozzles so it is a very short um, construct for, for example, um, front plates or um, short tools, because here you can see the spray goes wider. Yeah? It is not on a point, and um, you have it more like a cloud around the tool. And also you can adjust it with the nozzles to different lengths of your tool. And the next um, spraying unit is from the clean cut system. It is also with four nozzles and um, they are not adjustable but the benefit is these nozzles are very close to the tool and we can bring a lot of ethanol to the tool tip and also in the depth for the machining for example. And what means clean cut? Clean cut is an additional function or system for your um, Datron machine for example, for M8 cube or ML cube, um, it's like for a dust suction or chip suction. I will do it here. Maybe you can take a focus. And um, in this case, we need a special spray unit. Mark, maybe you have some additional information about this spray sure. unit? Sure. Um, so, as Johannes said it before, um, the, the clean cut system is an option on the machines. Um, but anyways, if you ever face problems with having sufficient cooling on the, on the tool, no matter if it's a thread milling tool or just a regular end mill or drill, uh, you should consider using a, a clean cut spray head uh, uh, unit, the uh, spray unit, because it will also work on the regular machine even if it's not uh, retrofitted or equipped with a clean cut system. So it just brings the nozzles closer to, to the, the tip of the flute. Uh, and in some like very narrow areas or very tight features, um, this could help improving the, um, the milling process and the cooling effect on the, on the tool and on the part. So um, especially like everything that's smaller, I would say three millimeters, four, milli four millimeters could be very beneficial to use this um, clean cut spray head. Thank you. Um, and the last one, the spray unit uh, for the MX cube for the eight kilowatt spindle is completely, completely new developed. You can see it on the picture. There we have also four nozzles and they are very deep. Yeah? So um, we can go very close to the tool and they are also adjustable a little bit. And you can see the, the spray is like a line through, through the tool, tool top. Yeah? So we don't have a lot of dust like the four adjustable nozzles from the M8 cube. Here it is much better because with the 8 kilowatt spindle we need this, um, we, need, we need there more ethanol or more coolant 
to bring the temperature around the tool and the tool down. Yeah, that's it. The point that you said it before is also important. So that means that we give uh, the ethanol the chance to go on the top of the tool and after they touch the top of the tool or the, the point there uh, uh, the working is, uh, uh, is before, um, that we um, there just have the vaporizing of the ethanol. Yeah, that's correct. So we have also requirements to our threads. Mm -hmm. um, what is on this case very important? So important is that you have the settings. Uh, that means the settings of the tool, the settings of the machine. So we talk it, uh, about the spindle and also the, the machine before. Um, important is what I want to do. So that means which quality I want. Um, so um, have I just have uh, to, to gauge um, the uh, thread. So that means I have to control it before mm -hmm. or after that uh, working or um, do I want to have a thread where also just like to clamp something um, that is uh, the the main part of the, the the question we got it which quality you want to do with um, the thread mills okay so the thread tapping give us the most process safety and uh, what is with the thread milling in this case what we have to do there? So uh, if you take a look of the thread cutting, um, I said it before, there we have just movement in one axis. So um, this is the point that gives us the safety um, in the process. Um, if we take a look on the milling, um, there we have to move three axes. So um, there we have to confirm these three axes to the perfect process. So mm -hmm. we have to um, have the perfect uh, dimension of um, the, the helix we have to do and also have the right um, RPM, um, the right um, feed rate um, to get the perfect um, thread mill. Okay, so I need, before I start my machining, I need an adjustment in this case mm -hmm. for the uh, true to gauge. So it is, yeah. Okay, so that's the requirements to the threads mm -hmm. and the next point is the correct core drill. So it is, yeah. Um, so um, drilling um, you can also do with um, 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 a drilling tool or you have to do that with a single flute one or an, a normal end mill. So um, there are two types of way you can do that. The best way is if you have uh, small tolerances, so that means in the smaller dimension, like three millimeters going down, there um, the best way to make this is to drill it, mm -hmm. uh, because um, there we have the perfect process for that. Um, also the same like um, the thread cutting, it's just only movement by one axis. Um, by the bigger one, there you can use um, a normal end mill, um, yeah, for my. Uh, mostly we use um, a single flute one because the chip channel is very big and there you have the chance uh, that, that there you have the chance to bring out the chips mm -hmm. um, just better like um, uh, yeah two flute or three flute one and if we do the milling um, some of our customers have the problem mm -hmm. that the uh, true to gauge yeah uh, is fitting at the top of the thread and at the lower part it is doesn't fit yeah. So what is what is the problem in this case? So um, the most problem is that we have just um, more forces on the on the top of the tool. If you're going down much more in deeper um, um, deeper holes, um, so uh, if you got this, you have have deeper holes to do. That it's also the best way to drill that um, because there is the safe safest process. Okay, so it is very important that you use only the correct tool length and uh, your tool um, should not be too long yeah, mm -hmm. because you get a wrong um, result. Um, yeah, some more information how I can fix it, to fix this problem? Yeah, the, the main uh, part is um, that we can say is the smaller dimension you have to drill. Um, yeah. Also like you can do uh, the bigger one, so there's uh, also the point that we have um, the, 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 the top of the machine, so um, there's um, the point that uh, we also drill um, like the machine can do. Um, double flute end mill? 
So it's also a solution? It also. So after the uh, use an, a normal end mill, um, just a single flute one, um, mm -hmm. then you have to clean up the surfaces by a, a two flute one, so to get the perfect surfaces and also to get a right um, hole on this side. Okay, thank you. What is also very important is that you use the Datron uh, thread mill command, not the for, uh, not the the, the um, pass um, um, pass cycle uh, pass output from the cam. That's mm -hmm. what was the word. Um, so because the pass output from the cam program is like um, a line and then a circle and then a line and a circle and there is no adjustment on the machine possible. So you have to go back to your um, to your cam program. Um, you need the tolerance, um, set up the tolerance again, go back to the machine, mill the thread again, and so you have a lot of work. So if you use the Datron command, you can um, adjust your thread directly on the machine. Um, you can um, change the tool diameter and then the machine will drive uh, compensation. Okay, so let me um, get everything straight and sum this a little up. Um, drilling the counter bores is a very good strategy up to a certain size of the thread, so let's say M5, M6, um, because you also get the um, inconsistency of the counter bore like out of the game. So that's just one variable and if you have a drill bit it's always the right size and if you have an end mill that might be like around a little bit undersized uh, your counter bore will probably not be um, exactly and like super perfect. But like in general everything that's larger on M5 uh, what Mario said is helix milling like a spiral uh, movement down to the ground um, of the thread is probably the the best way to um, yeah create the the counter bore. Yeah, thank you, Mark. One last point is the correct position of the threads in my strategy. So at the beginning end of the program or at the end of the program, that's a that's a question. What do you think? What is the correct position at the beginning at the end? Well, it depends on um, yeah which uh, position the, the the drillings or the, the holes are, are inside of the, the part. So that means um, if you can do that before or at the start of the program, then um, you have to do it before. So uh, if chips inside and you have just small sizes of tools, they also can broken when they go down in the hole. Yeah, that's correct. So I recommend you start the thread milling at the beginning of your machining because at the end we have the problem with the chips but there we have now a solution on the MX cube for example the blow off nozzle you can see it there we have there a, a camera inside of the machine and I will show you where is it located you can see um, the blow off nozzle here and you can see some chips on the part and I will show you now how this nozzle works. I start a program and the machine will start the blow off process and you see the chips flowing away and it is also possible to change the settings to um, tighter um, distances between the movements and also different heights so it is very comfortable. Okay, the next chapter is the practice. So it is. So here we want to start with the milling thread mill. So yep. we want to show it inside of the machine. So. What you can hear now in the rear is the tool assist working. There we have a bigger tool magazine with up to 110 tool slots.
So what we can see here is um, that we don't need to drill before. Um, so it is the combination of drilling and cutting the thread just by one, um, by one uh, end mill. So this is a very good solution for example front plates, so t tight materials or tight, mm -hmm. yeah, tight materials, um, front plates or uh, aluminium profiles, um, yeah, or short threads in this yeah. case. So Mark said it before, um, so um, the reason here is that we have just a combination of um, cutting the, the thread and also have to drill the hole, so there are a lot of chips we have to bring out there and um, it's for the geometry of the thread we have just uh, a little problems to bring that out, so um, there we just um, have the, 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 the part that we have smaller dimensions of, uh, and, uh, of materials. But it needs a lot of time. That's it, yeah. <laughs> you can see it here in the process. These are five threads and we need a little bit more time. And yeah, that was the milling thread mill. And the mm -hmm. next tool is the... The multi-thread mill. So um, there is uh, the point that we have to drill before. Yeah by doing with uh, uh, just more like one ro uh, rotation um, to do all of the thread. Okay. So just take a look inside of the machine. So there is the tool change again, because for this thread we need a core drill. And we do this core drill with a step drilling. And the machine provides the next tool in the rear so we have a very short tool change time. So there you can see we just do just a little bit more than one uh, rotation to get a perfect surface here. It's also important that you have uh, uh, here to save time yeah? by doing the whole thread with just one rotation. Yeah, it was working a little bit uh, quicker than the first one. And the next one is um, the thread tapping. So it is. Also, here we just, uh, you said it before, we just here have um, the highest one, that means uh, M5. Um, also here we have to drill before and um, after that we have the, the tapping. Can you tell us the RPM so that we have uh, the parameters for drilling here? So uh, the, the um, parameters for drilling is here uh, 18,000 RPM mm -hmm. and the feed rate uh, in ZX is going down with uh, 2 meters per minute. Okay. So this goes much quicker than the first one. Yeah. And then we have the product presentation of the latest tool from Datron now. It is the new thread mill. Yeah. So I would say first uh, we take a look inside of the machine and take a look uh, how the, the tool is working. Okay. After the last um, thread millings now, we want to check through the gauge. gauge. Yeah. So the main working of the tool is like the same as the old ones. So we have to going down inside of the hole to the bottom of the hole and move up with an helix up to the top of the, the hole. So it's like the old movement from the old um, thread mills. But yeah. um, I think you want to explain us after the machining 
Yeah. Um, what is the difference between the old and the new tool? So this, um, yeah, after working of the machine, we can take a small look to um, our uh, tools here in front of the table. Um, there you can see perfectly the differences between the old one we can see here on the left side and the new one here on the right side. If you see um, the shanks different here, so we give this new tool much more stiffness. That means that we have a bigger shank here, a bigger shaft here, um, and also have to give them um, a chip channel um, because uh, we have to get much more um, dimension here and then we have uh, to give the tool the chance to bring out the chips perfectly uh, to get no vibrations inside um, and also the, 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 the fluid of um, the, the cutting tool is much bigger to give them more stiffness to get more power uh, inside of the tool. Um, the tools, uh, we got it here, um, we got have uh, in uh, different dimensions okay. so we started by M1 to M12. Um, there I have uh, an example for you. It is um, here on the left side the M1 and his neighbor is uh, the M10. Um, I think uh, I don't have to say which one is it. <laughs> so you can see the difference between the sizes. Okay, so the new tool is also one thread size. So it is. And um, the old tools will be also available. Yes, so we want to do uh, a combination of the old one and the new one, so um, that means that we have the older one um, also, but doing with the new one um, the, to make with one uh, cutting tool just one thread, yeah, that means just uh, one tool for M6, one tool for M8, um, so that we have here the perfect uh, combination of the dimension of the tool. Okay, we want to check. Yeah. to gauge. So it is. So, at first we want to check uh, the M6. So I started here in the middle. There we can see, first no problem, also the second one, the third one I want to do later because there is M5, so also with the new tool no problem, so we'll check the other side. So here it is. This one, no, and also here, no chance. So I lost. I want to check the M5 one. Also here, the good side is okay. And also here, no chance. Yes, that's an amazing result um, with the new tool. Um, do you know, is there a release date for the international market or yeah. only for the German market at the moment? Uh, actually, we started um, um, with um, yeah, checking the tools by all our machines. Um, so different spindles, different cooling systems. So um, yeah, we need uh, a little bit of time to check that all. Uh, in Germany, we started at um, June, 1st June. Um, but it's uh, for the international, uh, we just have just my, like four to six weeks more time um, to bring that on this market. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Marius. Mark, do you have something more? Yeah, thank you very much for the uh, presentation of the new tool. Um, so, the major difference between the old version of the tool or the, like the existing tools, um, let's put it that way, is that the on, on one point is we, we don't have a variety of thread sizes that we can cover with just one tool. So one tool for each side. And the second is we have a much stiffer 
uh, shank of the uh, of the tool. Uh, because one of the problems that a lot of customers have reported to us is that threads look like a bit um, like like chipping, so you get a lot of vibrations in, during the milling process, and it doesn't look very clean. Even that they were correct with a go no go um, gauge. So now with the with the improved stiffness of the tool, your the the actual uh, faces of the of the thread and of each pitch look much much better. Is that correct, Marius? So it is. Yeah. So we work also. Uh, on this problem, um, so uh, with more stiffness, we just have the chance to to uh, take out a lot of vibrations out of the tool, and um, so also we got no problems with bringing out the chips. That's also a reason for um, yeah bigger vibrations. It's also um, when you take a look on the bigger sizes of the thread. So um, with the more dimension or the more stiffness of the tool, so also there is no problem with bringing out of the chips. Okay, so the last words. Thank you, Mark, for your support. Thank you, Marius, for your support. Thank you for watching. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and stay tuned for the Daytron experience. We will send uh, in the future more videos, more information about Daytron products and processes. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.